Hi, everybody. I'm going to share with you an overview of Spark ELA. So we'll kind of dive in together and learn some of the details uh, that this exciting new content offering will provide. So anyway, uh, without further ado, uh, we'll go ahead and begin. So some of you may be online and, and realizing that Edge Elastic has a whole line of Spark products. So I just wanted to provide a slightly larger context. Uh, so what is Spark and uh, what different Spark offerings are there? Well, I think what's common about the Spark offerings, uh, there are some differences here and there, but what's common about them is that they are supplemental activities and they're organized in playlists. And we first introduced Spark Math and then Spark Science and then Spark Reading. And now we're kind of broadening that out into uh, a fuller suite of Spark ELA offerings. So when I mentioned uh, more than one offering here for Spark ELA, there is Spark Reading, Spark Words, Spark Phonics, and Spark Cross Curricular. So I'll be talking about all of these today. And so for Spark Reading, um, there are playlists, and the different Spark modules are, are um, you know, designed for different grade levels. So in this case, for Spark Reading, uh, we have a pretty uh, comprehensive uh, array of different grades, so from grades 2 through 12. And in this case, the Spark reading playlists include options of, you know, fictional or nonfiction reading passages. There are comprehension questions associated with those passages. And then finally, there are additional STEM articles and examples included as well. So you'll notice in Spark reading that the playlists um, are organized by, you know, different, uh, I think, modules within them. And within that, uh, you'll see that they're organized by a Lexile score. So you'll see the green arrow pointing to it. So you can always kind of have a good idea of the readability level uh, for each uh, group of activities. And here's an example of a Spark reading, reading comprehension passage. And so we have a passage on the left you can see there's a text-to-speech read aloud uh, that's available. And then you can see on the right, there's a multiple choice question. You can have multi-part questions on the right, you know, um, multiple select, a sequence of questions. Uh, there can even be some tech enhanced questions to the right. But anyway, this is a little bit on a Spark uh, reading, reading comprehension example. And there's also STEM examples, as I mentioned. So here's one of those. And we have a multiple select question here to the right um, regarding you know, answering questions about the article to the left. And the second module I wanted to talk about um, is our offering called Spark Books. Now, Spark Books is designed for you know, secondary grades 6 through 12. And they're ready-made assessments for over 20 popular books. Um, so each playlist includes three main things in it. Um, one is a vocabulary assessment. The second is quizzes on specific chapters. And then finally, there are additional essay prompts. And here's an example of what a Sparks, Spark Books playlist looks like. I selected The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. And you'll see that it starts out with that vocabulary assessment, moves on to quizzes covering specific chapters. And then there's the writing uh, response as well. And uh, so you can go ahead and preview and then assign uh, these particular um, assignments. And so here's an example of that vocabulary assessment that I mentioned. Um, this is a matching match, match the following type question where you're finding, uh, you know, the definition for each word. Then uh, there's also the quizzes based on uh, specific chapters in the book. So here we have an excerpt, as well as a multiple choice question that's asking you about that. And then finally, there is Spark Books, uh, the essay prompts. And you can see that there's an opportunity, not just for classic question types like multiple choice and things like that, but constructed response uh, responses as well from students. And here's a partial book list. I mentioned over 20 titles. I think these are the earlier titles that we released. Um, but you can see that you know re we're really looking at that middle school and high school audience. 
And then um, there's Spark Words. So for Spark Words, it covers you know, many grade levels from grades two through 12. Each lesson includes both a word study and a passage. So here's an example of a word study within Spark Words. Uh, where we were looking at, you know, vocabulary and reviewing that. And then um, there's a passage question as well. And then there's Spark Phonics. So this one's for the younger learners, um, grades K through two specifically. And each playlist includes a diagnostic test. Um, in fact, you know, there are quite a few. And then activities to help identify sounds. So here's an example. So we'll um, take a look at a quick example of a Spark Phonics diagnostic test. So we're answering this multiple choice question as a student. Then we have a lot of activities and they're really designed to get students familiar with the different sounds of words to, you know, get more familiar with just being able to, to uh, read. And then there's Spark cross-curricular. So this is for um, different Lexile levels, but you know, the range um, for Spark Cross Curricular is um, 400 to 1,200. Each playlist includes additional STEM uh, practiced um, by Lexile level. And you can see here, there's, uh, you know, the Lexile level um, for Spark Cross Curricular. So you can see um, for all those articles down below, uh, we're covering the Lexile scores between 790 and 980. And then here's an example of that, um, of a STEM cross-curricular article. And so I really do encourage you to explore uh, Spark ELA. In fact, you can sign up for a free trial, whether you have a premium account or whether you have a free teacher account. And the way you can try a free two-week trial is, you know, you'll no notice that uh, green arrow in sort of the top, sort of center right. You just click on that link and then you can get started. So for the rest of this presentation, I'm gonna be showing you what it looks like once you have activated a free trial and then uh, show you some of the features within a live demo. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So let's explore. So I'm going to Safari here is this teacher. Uh, this teacher's name is John Kite here. And uh, we just started, you, you notice the link's not here anymore to request a free trial. It's because we've already started the free trial. Um, and so there's two areas for playlists. And I think the word spark, you know, as far as content in Angelastic, you know, becomes almost synonymous with playlists. Uh, so the question you might ask at the beginning is, okay, my playlist versus playlist, you know, what's the difference? Where do I go first? And you might be tempted to click on my playlist here, but we definitely encourage you um, to find the playlist in the library first. So you click on playlist there. And now I'm organizing the playlist right now by ELA. So I can see these different, uh, you know, comprehension package, um, Spark books, et cetera. So, um, you know, for the Spark reading, Let's look at the details of the playlist and see what it includes. And so we're looking at the details of the playlist. We can see uh, the reading comprehension. We can see the Lexile scores. Um, here's the baby panda example. If we're going to preview this, we'll see the kind of questions, the kind of uh, you know uh, reading uh, exercises that are available. So in this case, we have um, how wolves became dogs. And we have uh, this passage. Uh, we can go ahead and move around as we want. We're in preview mode, but if we were in just the regular student mode, they, they'd be able to highlight. Uh, that's not something that's available in preview mode. We can go ahead and start answering questions. Uh, to the right, we see there's going to be a variety of multiple choice questions here. And so maybe that's something that we like. And you know, we can certainly uh, move around uh, as we want to. And if we want to use this playlist, we can actually use it. And once we've clicked on use it, um, then we can go to my playlists to find it. But before we do that, I think I uh, left out a couple things here. One is that you are able to filter. I was already filtering by ELA, which was helpful. Um, but uh, you can also 
filter by, you know, created by me, shared by me, I'm the author or previously used. You could filter by specific grades, uh, specific collections, and specific tags as well as you're looking for exactly the right playlist to add to your class. So let's say you've gone ahead and added a playlist to your class. Um, so what you'd go ahead and do, and you can see we've kind of fast forwarded in time, maybe a week, a week and a half, something like that. You can see we've already uh, administered the vocabulary assessment here, as well as, and in this, in this case, I selected the house on Mango Street. And you can see that I've, I've already um, assigned this. So we can continue to assign. Now, of course, this is in order of the chapters covered. Um, but if these are just articles on the left that aren't really connected to each other, you don't necessarily have to assign them in this type of sequence. Uh, you can assign, you know, a specific article before another one. It doesn't matter kind of what order they're in here. But in this case, I would imagine that, you know, for House on Mango Street, when students are done with this assessment um, and they're, they'd be working on reading the next chapters, and then you go ahead and assign it to them. And I'll show you how to assign something, but also show you a report that's unique to Spark and it's unique to these playlists. And in this case, we have this insights area. So it's measuring a couple things. It's measuring the score of specific students and it's also measuring the time spent. So here we're looking at different performance. You can see Alma is our star. She's at 100%. She's a uh, you know, high performer here. And um, we can also see how much time she spent, um, high or low. So she's spending a lot of time and getting the results I think she's probably looking for. So anyway, um, this is Alma. We can even click from this insights area into um, a premium level report, which is her student profile report. So let's take a look at Alma here and see um, a little, learn a little bit more about her. Of course, she's at 100% for this, and I don't think I have any other student data in here. So the reports aren't gonna be super interesting, but they're gonna give you an idea of what you'll see. So we're just waiting for the report to generate. Here she is, um, grade level three from Delray Elementary. Yeah, she's doing great, um, but you can kind of continue through with this playlist to look at um, you know, how she's doing on a domain and standards level mastery and a little bit more about her progress. And you can even look at longitudinal performance as you filter from school year to school year. So there's a lot of uh, reporting capability here, uh, which is nice. And then certainly access to that premium report, uh, which is also, I think, really helpful. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and assign one of these. And we're gonna assign um, the House on Mango Street section two. Go ahead and assign it. And here we have a specific class or group that we can assign it to. Let's assign it to both of our classes. And let's go ahead and have it opened on the 16th next week. And we'll have it end on the 18th. That, that'll give us enough time. And then we can determine the open policy. If it's something that's just gonna be sort of a homework assignment or activity, we can just automatically have this open at a specific time. But you know, if you do want to reserve this for a formal test, um, I encourage you to select open manually in class. That way you can determine exactly when the test is gonna be available for students to take. So students can be looking you know, straight ahead up at you, the phones are away, they're in their seats, they're ready to go. Now you can open the test. So if that's the sort of designation that you want, um, this is where you would set that. And then you can automatically close or close manually in class as well. Um, and then there's other uh, features here that are available. For those of you with premium level access, you'll recognize these features. Um, but I'll, I'll take a little time uh, to get into some of them. You know, release scores, we can determine uh, what level of visibility students get after the assessment has been closed. So for example, will students see nothing? Will they see their scores? Will they see their scores and their responses? Or will they see everything? Scores, responses, and correct answers. You can uh, make those determinations that really make sense um, and are suitable for your specific objectives. And then you know, we can make, turn this into a timed test. 
There are also anti-cheating features. Again, uh, those of you familiar with premium will know, will have seen this before. Those of you with the free version, um, this will be the first time you get to explore some of this premium capability within this um, Spark playlist. So it's kind of, in a way, a little bit of two pilots for the price of one. Um, and of course the charge is $0 for two weeks of um, trying this out. So definitely encourage you to, to take us up on that offer. So anyway, here is the ability to shuffle the items and the answer choices. Um, here's the opportunity to select a password, whether it's a static password that um, you know students will you'll tell the students before they start start the test, or a dynamic one that's automatically generated by Edge Elastic uh, before every class, and you know you'll get a brand new number that you can um, relay to the students so they can uh, enter in that number to start the test. So there's just a lot more anti-cheating capabilities here. Do we want students to just complete the test in one sitting? Do we want to restrict uh, navigation out of the test. This puts things in full screen mode so that um, you can go ahead and if students leave full screen mode, possibly to open up a new browser window, which we don't want, uh, we can go ahead, warn the student and report it to the teacher, or we can warn the student um, and uh, block access uh, after maybe two alerts and then the teacher will also be reported, you know, we'll get that report. And then uh, we can restrict question navigation. So students have to go in the sequence in which the test is presented, as well as um, you, know, you can enable safe exam browsers. So that's a browser lock for students who are using Windows and Macs. And then there's uh, redirect settings. So you can, um, you know, once the test is done, do you want to allow um, multiple attempts, et cetera? And then finally, there's some miscellaneous, uh, you know, settings that you can have like so we have some accessibility settings magnifier scratch pad scratch pads that notepad feature where students can show uh, evidence of their understanding and steps to complete their work and then we have um skipping the alerts to students here uh, and keypad uh, different keypad options different test interface options including and this is a premium feature including um the sort of test skin of your state test so if you want it to look a little more like the format and sort of the cosmetic look and feel of your test, you can also add that. So Spark is, uh, you know, kind of taking into consideration all these, uh, you know, adding all these premium level features, uh, which is nice. So then, um, and if you like these settings, let's say I have the perfect configuration and I think, you know, I'd love it if I didn't have to configure the test every single time. Um, well, what you can do then is you can just uh, you know, create, save the current setting and name it whatever you want. So this is always going to be my setting for Wednesday you know, quizzes or whatever. So I would go ahead and save that. So next time I'm you know, setting up the setting, I don't have to you know, do everything again you know, piece by piece. I can just go ahead and select Wednesday quiz or whatever the case may be. So this is when I assign it. And then students, once the visibility is available for them, once I've given students access, then students can go ahead and take the test. And then I'll see that in a live class board view, very similar to what you see, not only in the free version, but in a, you know, with the expanded visibility and additional features in the premium version. So there's um, all that capability within Edge Elastic. So again, uh, you know, my one uh, sort of call to action, if, if, you, if you like what you've heard and you're interested in giving it a try is, you know, if you haven't created a free teacher account, I would encourage um, you creating one. And the way you can do that is just go to edgeelastic.com. And um, so don't have an account yet, sign up, create your free account. I'm a teacher, just follow the instructions. And then once you've created that account, go ahead and select um, Spark, you know, the try, you know, select a free trial, and then you'll get to a two week free trial to Spark. So anyway, that's a little bit on um, Spark ELA. And I think we have a little time for some questions if there are any. And uh, thank you uh, for listening so far. And um, what other questions can we answer? Thanks, John. That was a great overview of Spark ELA. Can you just tell a little bit more about how the essays and the other questions can be graded, whether they're manual or they're um, graded by the teacher themselves? 
Yeah, absolutely. So in, in Edge Elastic, um, you have the opportunity to uh, have you know, manual grading for essay. So that includes providing a score. And then you have a comment area where you can provide a specific comment uh, for that score. Um, Spark ELA um, will give you that option. We also have within the paid versions of Edge Elastic rubric based scoring. And rubrics allow you to create a rubric, clone a rubric, share a rubric, uh, and, and really all the options that, we, that are available with that. Um, and then you can evaluate student performance with the rubric. I was looking at a couple examples of Spark essays, and I didn't see built in rubrics with them. But I'm under the impression that you could um, probably um, create rubric based scoring for these specific uh, constructed response questions. I don't know if uh, John Chen or others on the call might know that answer, but you know, I would I would assume that the answer would be yes for that. John is agreeing with you saying yes. Oh, people are saying yes. Good. <laughs> yep. John's going to in the chat. Good, good. Glad to hear it. 